Hey there everybody, this is Sonic Respiratory Flux, just call me Flux for short or whatever you want to call me. And as you can see, this is the start of a new Let's Play. Hooray! And this time we'll be playing Metroid Prime for the GameCube. I picked this kind of as a contrast to Star Fox Adventures, which, though, I, though enjoyable, was a little on the short side and didn't really have many optional things to do. This game, it's similar in some ways, but it's got a different gameplay style and has a lot more in the way of extra things. As you can see, I've already completed a file on this memory card. I will over not be playing hard mode because I feel like that would just make things more frustrating rather than actually making things harder because it doesn't actually change the game it just makes you take more damage and things like that so I'll just be playing through this on normal mode and with that let's get this underway shall we an identified distress beacon has been tracked to a derelict space vessel in orbit above Talon 4 By the way, um, pronunciations can get a little weird, especially when there's no guide. So, I will do my best. But, yeah. Holy crap, I'm just realizing that this game was made over ten years ago, and it still looks this good. <laughs> oh, man. This game. What is there not to love about this game? that introduction we begin the game this beginning segment in some ways is kind of a tutorial segment but there's there's things to do um, first off just shoot these things here to deactivate the force field. I don't know. I'm I'm probably not going to be be like talking too much about the controls of this game cuz I personally like feel like they're pretty easy to use. Um that they explain them on the on the screen too. It's somewhat just note that um control pad to change your visors, C stick to change your beams, hold R to aim. L will lock on, B to jump, and A to shoot stuff. That's about it, really. Um, other controls I'll explain as, the, as we need to use them, but for now, we should probably just focus on exploring this ship that we've been sent to, to kind of investigate shoot doors to open them just like any other metroid game there's a ton of stuff to to scan using the scan visor but i'm probably not going to do a, like a lot of the like regular standard scans i will however be going for a hundred percent scans of far, as far as logbook scans and a hundred percent items as well Um. Now that means that there are some things that are missable that I will try and not miss. But there is a chance I could screw that up. You never know. 
things happen. Let's play, curse, all that. But here's our first logbook scan, the parasite. It's basically just a small enemy. Just shoot it. Um, are any other things in here to worry about? There's more parasites. Just shoot them. Some, some dead things. Space pirates. Death caused by acidic burns to body. Ew. Ew. This one's still alive, but it's not scannable. I don't think... I don't know if any of the space pirates that you fight in this area are like logbook scan. Because... I don't know. But there's also something very large and very dead in the middle of the room, and that seems foreboding. At least to me. Ch charge beam by holding A, like it says, and you can clear out the rubble. It also has a bit of a tractor beam thing to it. You can pull in, like, pull in random pickups. And here they're showing us that there's a small hole in the wall here that we can probably find our way down somehow by using the morph ball by pressing X and now here's here's another scan the map station basically if you walk into it you can get a map for the area now there's only a certain number of these in the game and you can only scan them before you use them so this is technically a missable scan although if I had not scanned this one I would have still been alright there's ones later on, but if you use all of them without scanning one, you're kind of out of luck. Well, this map is kind of weird. Well, actually, wait, it... Or is it, like, normal? I don't know. Maybe I'm just remembering things weirdly. It's It kind of tends to happen. But there's a, there's a lot of places around here on this ship. So let's get exploring, shall we? And off we go. Scan panels to activate elevators. It's a common thing in this series, well, at least in the Metroid Prime games. You don't really have a scan visor in any of the other Metroid games, so that kind of makes it impossible to scan things, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, watch out for the fire there. Watch out for the electricity. Use the morph ball to get through this tiny gap. I don't know. I haven't really been talking about a whole lot except for the game right here because it's kind of early game stuff and there's really a, a lot that isn't really severe internal damage detected so he's probably not exactly in the best fighting shape and yeah one shot and he goes down. Um, crap. I think I think in this game, health pickups might possibly be logbook scans, but I don't know. It's not like they're really all that missable anyway. But, on that note, let's just keep moving along. There's only a couple scans in this area that are permanently missable if you even like miss them here. Ah, here's a, you know, that this thing, this tur defense turret, you can use a missile to destroy it immediately by pressing Y. Uh, here's missile ammunition. Yes, pickups things are, in fact, log scans, so note that. It's, this is the only game in the series where that happens. It's weird. Now, here is the one scan you're going to want. The pirate data. Base part and date encrypted data decoded. Um, I know there's an official pronunciation for that planet name, and I can't even remember right now. It's it has fallen. All ground personnel are presumed dead, either killed by the hunter clad in metal or in the subsequent destruction of the underground facilities. Our research frigates Orphean, Syracuse, and Vol Paragon. We're in orbit at zero hour and managed to retreat. Forget Orphean is now docked at Vortex Outpost. Orphean's cargo appears to have a 100% survival rate. 
Metroids are healthy, but on, but on restricted feeding schedules due to uncertain supply status. We are ready to begin research on the Metroids and under-promising life forms. Security status remains in code blue. No signs of pursuit from the hunter. Yet. In case you couldn't tell, that's basically a plot summary of the, of the first Metroid game. And what happens between this game and that, that game and this game. There's something dead in there. And it's honestly kind of creepy. I think there's a, there's a thing here that you can use. No. Yeah, let's just talk about infusion stuff. Uh, perimeter defense turret disabled. Basically, that just turns off the turret so you don't have to worry about it hurting you anymore. Charge beams also work well on it, as just as well as regular missiles. You can gather data in this area, but there's the only the one thing that you really need to know. The rest of it just describes basically what they've kind of been doing. It's like I said, I won't really be going for a whole lot of the like just standard random scans around here like in the game because there's a lot of them way too many to like, adequately cover everything really in a let's play without slowing things down horrifically but like I said I'll try and try my best to get important scans yeah I don't know why I keep switching to scan visor I'm, I think I feel like everything in this room is accounted for I don't know. I should probably talk about something that's not necessarily the game, so that I can like, so that I can actually kind of get a train of con, train of train of concept, tra train of consciousness. Yes, yeah, stream of thought, train of consciousness. Uh, my train of my train of consciousness is kind of derailed. So, everybody, leave the station now, or else you'll probably get hurt. <laughs> anyway, access to deck gamma approved. Mm. Ew. So basically, every everything on here seems to have died horribly before we even got here. So that is a thing that is happening, or has happened, to be more accurate. Uh, here's a space pirate that seems mostly healthy. Um, let's just kill it. Don't worry too too much about your about running too low on health. Um, now here is a door. Door is tightly sealed. Does not appear to be receiving power. So let's power it. Please insert metallic sphere into door lock. Well, we so happen to not only have a metallic sphere, but we can make ourselves a metallic sphere. That's mighty convenient. That's how the doors are unlocked. You draw and pick up the charge beam, as I've said before, and you can enable this door lock, which is open the same way, but there's a door over here, which might be interesting. This is a save station. Basically, you can save your game and fully restore your health. That is really nice that they, that they restore your health in this game, because it's kind of kind of off and on whether they do that and this it's kind of nice that that's that's the thing anyway let's open this door and see what lies beyond hmm looks kind of dangerous in here lots of bodies piled up by the door And this big central tank in the middle, looks like. Uh oh, something ugly is here. Um, and it seems to want to bother us. Hooray, this is the Parasite Queen, the first quote unquote boss of this game. Parasite female, genetically enhanced by unknown means. A weak spot has been detected in this creature's mouth. Use your auto-targeting to, to acquire this new target. It's 
basically if you scan it, it'll automatically lock onto the weak point, but it doesn't do that if you don't scan it, so it's actually worth your time to scan it even if you don't care about 100% scans. Just a little note, scans indicate the presence of potent mutagen origins on known creature exhibits the ability to fire weapon grade blasts of energy from its mouth, a trait not present in the standard parasite genome. It appears the pirates have been bioengineering, begun a bioengineering program with considerable results. Yes. So basically, what you want to do, there's a there's a shield around here that blocks your shots. So you basically just want to wait until you get a good opening to shoot to shoot through it, through through the gaps in it, and just shooting it in the face will probably see it's already down to like nearly nearly like dead, and it is dead. It's not a hard fight, but it falls into the pit below it when you kill it. And see how there's all this energy stuff around here, and it looks all explodey. That doesn't seem like a very good thing. Let's get out of here before this whole ship blows up. Evacuate immediately. Yes, reactor core critical. So this starts the starts this game's escape sequence. It's a long time staple of the series, there's always some kind of timed escape sequence. And... So, let's... let us blow this popsicle stand already. Disable the turrets. Wherever that they were. Um! That thing basically just blew up and away. So we've we've already been in this room, but when we were here last, things looked a little different, a little less destroyed. So let's take out the, the security team that's come to kill us rather than maybe fix the ship. Well, they were already having enough trouble with that anyway, but let's try and make our escape through the ventilation system. That seems to work a lot in the movies. Um, these are just parasites, so just shoot them so they don't damage you that much. They don't damage you that much anyway. It's early game stuff. But it's kind of creepy. Actually, I don't think they damage... Yeah, they can damage you like slightly. I don't But, if you are low on health, shooting them can make them drop health pickups, so that's a thing that can happen. Anyway, we're just making our way through the ventilation shafts. Um, not sure we're not sure how this is helping, where we're going with this. Um, we seem to come to a dead end, except it blows up in our face. Somehow it doesn't hurt us. But, let's just keep keep going, because it's better than standing still and crashing with the ship. We don't want to go down with this ship. We are not whoever that singer is, I can never remember. Anyway. Let's just keep on going. Keep, just keep on keeping on. And... Getting sick of these ventilation shafts, honestly. They're not making it any easier to breathe, believe it or not. Oh, that was slightly unexpected. Seems like it'd be kind of hot in here, but it is apparently not. So let's just follow that piston as it retracts, and head here. Hmm. Cutscene? Hey, it's you! Who could that be? Why, yes. 
Ridley is back once again, but he just flies off and destroys probably a fair amount of the ship, making his escape. This introduces the grapple beam mechanic, which we'll use for a bit here. By a bit, we mean twice. <laughs> By locking onto the targets, you can grapple. Scan this panel to disable the turrets. Ow. Scan this panel to activate the elevator and maybe get, get out of this place. But, wait, what's this? Um, explosions. And somehow they launch us back against the wall of the elevator and break our suit. That's a thing that happens in this game. Various suit malfunction. Morph ball malfunction. Missile malfunction. Charge beam malfunction. Grapple beam malfunction. So basically all of those things that just have that just mentioned you can no longer use after this segment of the game. You'll earn them back at some point. Anyway, the airlock is depressurizing so we could go back out into space. So let's let's blow this clam bake before we take any more damage than we already have. And as soon as you step out that door, the ship starts exploding, no matter what your time was. Ridley flies off in front of you. Off towards the planet, and you make your way to your ship, just in time to get away from everything. And we are in pursuit. How will this go for us? Tracking on enemy target has been lost. Ground based recon required. Begin landing sequence. And we have arrived at the Talon Overworld. This is where our ship will be parked basically for the rest of the game. And we can save progress. Game has been saved. So now, after quickly scanning our ship to get the logbook entry we couldn't get at the beginning part of the game. What the heck did I, did I just do there? I just basically... I got pushed up by my ship. I don't know. Anyway. But with this, the main portion of the game has begun. We're off on the overworld of the planet. We've got a whole bunch of places we can explore. And we don't have really any abilities to explore with. So in other words, it's a typical Metroid game. A bunch of places to explore, nothing to explore with at the beginning. Tangleweed, just getting some scans. And missile expansion. That'd be nice if we could get it, and if we had missiles to expand. Um, anyway. Um, moving along from that comment, I think we will start moving around and exploring this area in the next episode. So, until then, this has been some new respiratory flux. Call me flux for short, or whatever you choose to call me. It's not like I can really stop you anyway. Um, 
If you like what you see, then respond, vibrate, feedback, and resonate in the comments below. If you don't like what you see, well, you can do that as well. And maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll take your advice and perhaps work on improving my my quality for the future. Anyway, I think this for I think the second let's play is off to a good start so far. So let's so I will end it here. And we will see you guys wait me. I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Metroid Prime. Peace.